Uh, and I know that you are very community focused. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing, you're, you're always, and uh, I've, I've heard you talk about having other types of artists around of all types, uh, whether it's a mm -hmm. musician or uh, somebody sculpting, that energizes you, right? You, you need those people around to, to feed off their energy. Right. I, well, it makes me sound like a creative vampire. Uh, <laughs> no, because you're, you're, you're giving them energy, too. So everybody's right. giving up everybody. everybody yeah, it's not immune to vampires. <laughs> right, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> it's an all, makes all of our next meetings very, very awkward. Um, but no, it, I, yeah, there is an energy that happens when, when I'm around other artists. I love hearing any artist talk about their craft uh, you know, any artist working at a high level talking about their craft, I am just fascinated with. I mean, right now I'm, I'm wearing a, a ba Basquiat shirt, shirt. Um, because I love uh, I lo love uh, his art and everything. And uh, so, but so I'm just like any artist who is functioning and, and just doing the thing. If what if and doing the thing well, I, I want to hear you talk about it. I want to hear you talk about your craft. I want to hear you talk about your process. I want to hear you talk about your practice. Um, I want to. I want to hear what brought you into love of of uh, of whatever it is you're doing. Because, um, like when I was coming up in high school and college, I had no interest in, in poetry, for example. But you know, once I start hanging out with a bunch of poets, people who love poetry, people who have poems, you slide, you cut their wrists, they bleed poetry. You know, they, they live for this stuff. They, this stuff keeps them alive. You know, you start hanging out with folks like that. And it's like, you, you take a whole new appreciation for poetry at that point, um, which is why poetry started playing more and more of a role in, in some of my works, for example. Uh, you know, same with visual artists. You know, they, you know, I can draw stick figures maybe on a good day. Um, but, you know, I surround myself with visual artists and I love how they come at the world. I love how they see the world. Uh, you know, and I, I love the, the their design eye for the world, and uh, you know, I learned from that. I, you know, so and 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 like I said, their passion for for all this stuff, you know, is infectious. But it also tells you, you know, and maybe that was the hole in my education. Like maybe I would have developed an appreciation for art or, or poetry if I had learned from someone who was passionate about poetry, as opposed to someone who just had to teach a poetry section, right? So there's a whole, whole different level of, of learning uh, that goes on when, when you're taught by people who are passionate about it, who love it. So my students learn creative writing for me, no problem. And I do not pull any punches teaching uh, when I teach creative writing. It's like, hey, there's, uh, there's the writing you learn in school, but that's not what we're going to be doing here. <laughs> we are going to be doing creative writing and you'll be learning creative writing from me the way we do it out in the world at the high levels. And the students rise to the occasion. <laughs> Seems to me that with everything that you do, not everything, but, but with a lot of things you do, there's an emphasis in community, whether it's the different conferences you go to and the networks that you, the, the, the contacts and the, and the networking you do that you've cultivated, mm -hmm. uh, or whether it's uh, hosting your own writer's conference, uh, MoCon, and there was something similar that just happened called NoCon, which wasn't technically a conference, but got a lot of the same people were there having a lot of the same fun. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so part of it is, is I didn't get here by myself, right? I didn't just bring up a fully formed writer, you know, knowing all, what to write and where to send your stuff. No, I, I, I was, I've been shaped and formed by, by community this whole, on this whole journey. And so, uh, and so it makes sense that I would want to, at the very least, pay some of that forward, right? Um, every step along the way for in my writing journey, uh, there's been a mentor that's come alongside me to help me get to the next level. Well, I've been thrilled to be able to be that sort of mentor for a lot of uh, a lot of young writers, a lot of young artists, um, and, and be that mentor for them. Um, I had a uh, you know coming up, I could not seem to make any headway in, uh, in the local community, the, the local. Uh, uh, genre community it just I just could not make any headway in it um <clears throat> but you know I, I was welcomed in some of the national some of the national conferences and in the national community and so it's like all right I don't I don't know what this means yet but I'm just sort of filing in the back of my head um but then the opportunity came around so I was just like hey maybe we should just do our conference so uh you know I put together MoCon um, at the time, it was part of a ministry of a church. It was a, the whole idea was to have a horror writers conference in a church. That was literally the conceit of uh, MoCon. 
Um, and that's the way we ran it for at least the first 10, 10 to 13 years. We ran it as a horror writers conference in the church. And then writers would come in from around the country to be a part of it. And then, um, and that was a way of just sharing my, the network I developed across the country, sharing that with my local writing scene. You know, uh, again, the whole idea of building community, uh, you know, right, right where I am. And so, uh, so we actually, we ran MoCon for about 10 years, well, for exactly 10 years. And then uh, we retired it because we were like, well, 10 years is a good run. So let's uh, call it, call it a day. Um, but then, and then, uh, so the next year went by, we didn't do MoCon. And so, uh, but I started hearing from some of the folks about, hey, we really wish we could go back to church. Uh, da, da. And I'm like, all of y'all are atheists. Why are y'all bugging me to go back to church? <laughs> um, and I, so then I was just like, look, I, planning MoCon is a lot. Um, it basically means I don't do much traveling for, to conferences in the first quarter of the year because we hold MoCon like the first weekend in May. So it means I, I don't get to go to conferences before then really. Um, and my productivity is definitely in the toilet because I'm just planning, planning, planning uh, MoCon, uh, you know. And so I'm just like, it, it takes a lot. So why don't we, I tell you what, I could do a compromise and we could do no con. And what no con is, is basically, hey, me and my family, we're at home this weekend. <laughs> That's it. We're still home that weekend. So if y'all want to come by and hang out all day, we, we are willing to do that. And so, uh, so we did no con the following year. And uh, how many we have? We had like 40, 40 plus people throughout our house uh, that weekend. And we're like, you know, at this rate, we could just do MoCon because 40 year olds are going to show up. That's <laughs> near MoCon level numbers anyway. So we'll we just go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bring back MoCon. And so, so we did, and then uh, so we ran MoCon for another three to four years before the pandemic hit. Um, and uh, with the, the slight pivot is that uh, we didn't do, we no longer held it in a church. We would hold it in different community venue spaces. Um, and then we would partner more, more intentionally with, uh, uh, so like our meals would be catered by uh, black entrepreneurs. And then we'd have uh, different visual artists highlighted during the, the, the in the space. and. You know, just as a way to tie in more of the local artistic scene to MoCon uh, in terms of how it moved uh, within the, the local community, so. You're so tied into the networks of Indianapolis. You know Indianapolis history. Every time I, I, I come to see you, I learn something new about Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Can you ever see yourself relocating to another city? No, no. As a matter of fact, I'm actually uh, in the morning. Oh, I haven't cleared it with the school yet, so I gotta probably do that. But anyway, uh, tomorrow I'm taking a, a walking tour of. Uh, where am I walking? I think tomorrow we're, I'm doing a walking tour of uh, Indiana Avenue with a local historian um, to learn more about uh, Indiana Avenue during its heyday. So um, that's in no way tied to my next middle grade novel or anything. But, uh, <laughs> but if it were, that sure would be a wonderful works. way to yeah. both educate your students and learn more and get your research knocked out. Correct. <laughs> um, and, but I mean, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm always loving to investigate more uh, Indiana history or Indianapolis history in particular. Uh, I, I love uh, doing that sort of investigation. I love doing that sort of learning because, uh, well, one, uh, Indianapolis is part of who I am and it's part of my identity. So uh, the, the, me interrogating Indianapolis is just an extension of me interrogating part of who I am and interrogating my identity since I'm always asking the question, who am I? Who am I meant to be? Who am I, uh, you know, what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? You know, since I'm always coming back to revisiting that idea, that's part of part of the process. Um, and then two, um, I see Indianapolis as uh, America and microcosm. So the more I can interrogate uh, Indianapolis, the more I'm seeing all the things that go into making America what America is, you know, I'm, I can explore by teasing apart Indianapolis. And that is why one day they're going to paint you up on a building. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Bella or some other spray paint artist is going to do it. She's going to paint you right next to Ticker and Vonnegut. Right. There you go. It'll be uh, you, Vonnegut, I don't know, maybe John Green. <laughs> <laughs> and Mari Evans, because Mari Evans is down there too. 
That's true. Hey, I'm around. Barbara Shoop's here. There's, there's lots of great writers. Right, there's a lot, lot, lot of great writers here. <laughs> well, you can paint us all as, as, as vampires. It'll be, a, <laughs> it'll be a great mural. <laughs>